hi guys welcome back to my channel my name is abiola and in today's tutorial we'll be recreating the circle flesh shot here's the one i made for myself after making this shot i realized that mine was too full my flare was basically too full so all you have to do if you don't want yours to be this full is to reduce the measurement for the flare and that is not a problem at all the type of fabric you will be needing is a thick fabric that can stand i actually thought i was using a very thick fabric i used duchess a thick duchess at that and yet it seems as though it did not stand you know the way the inspiration was standing so you need a very thick fabric i made use of two yards of duchess you can be needing less or more depending on how full your flare is going to be and also depending on your size without further ado let's proceed with the tutorial of the day the first step we're going to take because the top of this paper is not straight is to mark out a starting line that will serve as the guide okay and after marking the starting line at the top i would also go ahead to mark out a starting line at the side as well you know just to have a straight line on both um edges okay so after that um the next step is to determine how wide we would want our waistband to be as usual i like to use a waistband of 1.5 inches okay so i'm going to go ahead to place that 1.5 inches on the starting line you can decide to use one you can decide to use two inches for your waist band okay now after that the next step is to determine how you know deep you want your crutch to be if this were to be a normal trouser i like to use a crutch depth of 11 inches but i'm going to add 1.5 inches to that which will make it 12.5 inches which is what i marked now i noticed that i should have added more i should have added probably 2 to 2.5 inches extra because this is a free shot the crotch area should be very very free so i'm going to advise that you add about 2 to 2.5 inches extra to your normal crotch measurement okay the next step is to proceed to rule out the lines to form a straight line and i'll label this line cl as in crotch length the hip circumference i'll be working with it's 42 inches 42 divided by 4 gives me 10.5 which is what i marked i'll mark that on the waistline as well and i'll connect the point into a straight line the waist circumference i'll be working with is 30 inches 30 divided by 4 is 7.5 so i'll proceed to mark that then i'll go ahead to add one extra inch for that okay then i'll proceed to connect the point with the straightest part of my curved ruler my bust span or nipple to nipple is seven inches take your own measurement i will divide that by two seven divided by two is three point five and that's what i marked at this point just to take my dart um the length of the dart i'll be working with is five inches so i'm going to mark that 3.5 inch again just to get a straight line then i'll proceed to mark the length which i said will be five inches now now i'll proceed to connect the point after which i'll take in my dart my dart is one inch which implies i'm going to take 0.5 inch on both sides of the line so i'm going to mark 0.5 inch here and 0.5 inch there and connect to the length of the dart and that's how you take in your dart the next step is to mark out our crotch extension and your crotch extension is gotten by dividing your hip circumference by 16 mine the one i'm working with is 42 42 divided by 16 gives 2.6 which is what i marked at that point and i am going to proceed to um, get my crotch curve after marking it 2.6 i came out from that point by one inch to enable us draw our crotch curve i went up by two inches and now i'm going to connect the points just as you see me doing so just note that the reason why i came out by one inch is just so that our crotch curve is not drawn too deep okay so that it's you know properly drawn basically the next step is to divide what you have on your crotch line by 2. What I have there is 13.1. 13.1 divided by 2 is 6.55, which is what I marked. So this is just to evenly distribute our trouser measurements. If you've watched any of my trouser tutorials, this is something you will be familiar with. I'll proceed to mark that again and connect that to form a straight line okay the next step is to determine the length of the shot and ensure you place your waistband on the certain line before you take that measurement and the length of the shot i'm working with is 18 inches i'm going to proceed to add extra one inch for hemming 
that means i'm going to mark 19 inches so 18 and 19 18 is the length the extra one inch is for hemming i'll mark them again as usual to get a straight line and i'll proceed to connect the points you know into a straight line the next step is to proceed to ship the shots and i will do that by going in at this point by 0.75 okay and i'm going to connect from the crotch area to that point okay the next step is to measure what i have at this point which is about 5.5 inches i'll go ahead to put the same measurement on the other side for trousers your measurements have to be evenly distributed then i'll connect from that point to the crotch area the next step is to proceed to cut out what we've just drafted okay now it's time to draft the back part of our shots basically the next step is to place the front shot pattern on the fresh pattern paper so as to draft the back part i just use cello tape to hold it down in order to make space for the bum bum i'm going to come out from this point by two inches and i would mark it i'll roll that into a straight line and to also make space for the bum bum i'll come down by 0.5 inch and i'll connect from that point to the crotch um line also because this is not a fitted pant i'm going to go ahead to co um, connect the crotch just as shown because our back is not straight and to also make space for the bomb bomb i'm going to be going in at this point by two inches now i'm going to replace that same two inches back at the side okay now i'll be going up at this point by one inch to make space for the bomb bomb now i'm going to go ahead to lengthen that waistline so that it will be easy for us to connect this point just as shown okay the next step is to proceed to connect the back crotch curve just as shown if you've watched my fitted trouser tutorial you will know that the connection of the back crotch curve is kind of different that's because this is a free trouser we don't need to make the butt fitted at all okay now i'll proceed to extend the crotch line and on that line i'm going to mark two inches okay and i'm going to connect that two inches from the crotch line to the waistline using the same straightest part of the curve driller i used in connecting the first okay now i'll proceed to connect from the short length to the crotch extension for the back pattern okay the next step is to proceed to extend this line as well and on that line i'm going to mark one inch and i'm going to connect from the crotch line to the trouser length line the next step is to proceed to cut out just as shown now i'm going to proceed to mark my dart again nipple to nipple is seven seven divided by two three point five so i'm going to mark that like three times just to get a straight line the length of my dart remains five inches i'm going to take half inch on both sides of the line and connect to the point now i'm going to bring out my front pattern i'll go down by 0.5 inch at the crotch area and then connect to the side seam this is just to enable the crotch relax better i don't even think it's that important for this particular shot but i just did it just to ensure that the crotch relaxes better so i'm going to um, cut it out the next step is to proceed to close our darts and after closing the darts we are going to be spreading this to get our flare so i'm going to quickly use my cello tape to close the darts after closing the darts i'm going to um, use my ruler to connect from the dart area like that straight line just follow the straight line to the end and i'm going to slash through that line okay because we're using the slash and spread method to get our flea um we could have done this another way but because of the pleats we just have to go through this method there might be other methods but this is the one i know the next step is to get a fresh pattern paper and then place my front pattern on top of it now what we're going to do is to spread this to how wide we want our um shot to be basically now i'm going to use my cello tape to hold the paper in place you can use your pins okay and then um, after holding the paper in place i'm going to decide how wide i want my flare to be for me i would like to use about 12 inches spread you can decide to use 8 9 10 11 i'm going to proceed to use my cello tape to hold it in place properly then i'm going to proceed to connect the points 
just as shown and i'm going to cut out okay the, the, it has to be a curve so you're going to connect the point as a curve and then you're going to cut out before we cut out i decided to make this part straight which is why i felt i shouldn't have even gone in by that 0 0.75 that i did at the time so what i did was just to add that back because i felt it will look better when it's straight okay this is my first time making a shot like this so i hope the next one will be better okay uh, the next one will be better so what i'm going to do now is to cut this out basically now the same steps were carried out for the front pattern we're going to do the same for the back pattern which includes um closing the dots using the cello tape to hold it in place going in with my ruler to get a straight line from the dot then use my um scissors to cut through the dot after which i'm going to place it on a fresh piece of pattern paper then spread by 12 inches okay then i'm going to use the front pattern to try to ensure that the curve matches this is just me placing the front pattern on these to ensure that our curve is matching so i'm just going to use this to replicate the curve and that is it basically then now i'm going to go ahead to add back that 0.5 inch as well i tried to use the back the front pattern to just add that so that everything is equal basically so that when i'm joining the sides it's going to match properly or perfectly so i'm going to still use the front part to also match this one and connect basically so when we are joining everything is going to match After spreading this pattern the next step is to introduce our pleats i'm going to mark out my dart line at this point now you remember we spread this pattern by 12 inches right so what i'm going to do is to divide what i have at that point by two so uh, i just marked the uh, midpoint of the the spread then i connected that to the dart leg basically and now that's what we're going to use to cut out on fabric so i'll basically use my scissors to cut through the pattern like i'm totally cutting through this time around because we're about to introduce our pleats so i'm going to place my fabric on fold and i'm going to place my paper on top of it just as shown then i'm going to go ahead to pin it down the next step is to decide how wide i want my pleats to be and i decided to use eight inches for my pleats that's what i marked i'll proceed to mark the same thing at this point okay that's going to serve as a guide for me to place my second paper before i place my second paper i'm going to try to draw a straight line on this pattern that will enable me know when the pattern is straight so i'm just going to draw a straight line just like that nothing major guys just a straight line to help us spread this to get our pleats okay I'm going to go ahead to extend the lines and then um, place the other paper so that it matches with the points that we made earlier. Okay, this is just to ensure that everything is a straight line. Now I'm going to go ahead to join the lines together, then add my one inch seam allowance at the side. Okay, that will also serve as my zipper allowance later on. Then add half inch allowance that we use to join the crotch area and half inch I would use to join the this down part right now. I'm going to add half inch seam allowance there. Another place I'll be adding allowance is the waist area, but I didn't add it immediately. I went ahead to add it so i'm going to proceed to cut out right now at this point i went ahead to quickly add my 0.5 inch allowance at the waist before i forget then i went ahead to cut out now i'm going to go ahead to use my chalk to note the pleats point and i'm also going to notch it because um so that i'm able to have this point on both sides okay so i'm going to notch i think notching is preferred to using your chalk to note the point so now i'm going to go ahead to remove the pins and remove the paper basically the next step is to now form our pleats okay i'm going to mark the notched point then note the midpoint of the notched point at the top it's divided by two is four so i'll just mark that and now it's time to form our pleats can you see can you see that we've already gotten our pleats so what i'll just do is to use my 
pin to hold it down then head over to my sewing machine to stitch that part just stitch that point basically before i go to my ironing table to iron i'll do the same thing for the second part after using my chalk to note the notched part i'll take the midpoint and go ahead to form the pleat i'll use my pins to hold it down before going to my sewing machine to um you know hold the pleats down and this is the front pattern i'll carry out the same steps after noting the that point i'll divide this part into two equal halves then i'll connect the point from um the dart to this point use my scissors to cut through then spread by eight inches after spreading i'll go ahead to you know connect the um, straight lines to ensure that the line is really really straight i realized that i didn't even have allowance by the side to draw my um my one inch allowance but what i did was to redo this and add all the allowance and here's what i have okay so i'm going to go ahead to cut it out now after cutting it out guys i'm going to go ahead to repeat the steps that i did on my front on my back pattern sorry because this is the front pattern so i'm going to form the pleat just as shown after forming the pleat i'm going to head over to my ironing table to iron the pleats properly after ironing the pleat here is what i have guys as you can see it is taking shape already um after ironing the pleats i'll do that for the four parts of the trouser the two front patterns and the two back patterns okay and now i'm going to join the crotch of the front pattern using 0.5 inch same allowance that we added so that's what i'm doing right now on my sewing machine i'm just joining the crotch part okay and here's what it looks like when i was done i would also proceed to join the crotch of the back pattern now i'm going to go ahead to trim this front pattern properly the curve here is not looking really curved so i'm just going to go ahead to make sure that the curve looks nice okay so i'm going to go ahead to use my scissors to trim it just a little bit to ensure that the circular part is really looking like a proper circle okay now i'm going to adjust that of the back pattern as well so that the circular part is looking like a proper circle as well now the next step is to join the sides okay using the same allowance that we added so i'm going to place the um, back and front pattern right sides facing each other just like you see me doing i'm trying to measure my waistline to ensure that um, i take the proper allowance at that waist area so that it's fitted on the waist so check out the waist area properly and ensure what you have there is your waist um, circumference okay at this point guys i've gone ahead to join the sides and the crotch area using the allowance i added now you decide where you want to keep your zipper left or right side i chose the right side i'm going to proceed to loosen the side with a razor blade or a seam ripper whatever you have the next step is to go ahead and work on the waistband my waistband unfold is two inches remember my normal waistband width is 1.5 inches plus 0.5 inch allowance is makes it two and in that half inch i will use to join the waistband okay and when you open it up it's four inches in width okay I've gone ahead to add my interfacing on the waistband okay use any interfacing of choice or facing of choice for the waistband and i've gone to fold it into two like i've ironed it right the length of the waistband is the length of my waist plus the zipper allowance which is two inches so it's basically like 32 inches okay so now to fix the waistband i'm going to place it right side facing the right side of the shot and what we're going to do now is to stitch it from beginning all the way to the end after stitching from beginning all the way to the end here is what i have now it's time to close up the waistband okay using the stitch in a ditch method if you've watched my skirt tutorials my trousers tutorials you are definitely not new to this method so i'm going to go ahead to just quickly explain it okay i'll flip my shorts to the wrong side and i'm going to proceed to fold the waistband just like you see me doing but this time around even if we are folding from the back we are going to be stitching from the front in the ditch i'm going to use my pins to demonstrate i'm pinning from the front in the ditch if you notice when i flip it over you can see that the pin is holding the back what you need to do is to fold the back and stitch from the front you see you're stitching in that ditch so by the time you're done you can't even see any stitch 
in front. You can see mine now I'm done. And you can barely even see any stitch in front. But look at the back. The back is fully closed. Okay? So the next step now is to proceed to fix my zipper. I went ahead to fix my zipper. After which I went ahead to hem the base of the shot. I just, I didn't want the length of the shot to reduce more than it already is. So I just used a bias tape to finish the hem. Thanks for watching this tutorial. I will see you in the next one.